In the quiet hours before dawn, when the world sleeps and dreams feel most real, there's a man who stares at the stars with an obsession that borders on madness. His name is Elon Musk, and he believes humanity's survival depends on a single impossible dream, making Mars our second home. But what if everything you think you know about his Mars mission is wrong? What if beneath the rockets and the rhetoric lies a truth so profound, so unsettling, that it changes everything we understand about our future among the stars? Tonight, we journey into the mind of the most controversial visionary of our time. We'll uncover the hidden motivations behind his relentless pursuit of the Red Planet, the secrets that even his closest allies don't fully understand, and the question that haunts every sleepless night. Is Elon Musk humanity's savior, or has he become something far more dangerous, a man drunk on his own power to reshape the destiny of our species? The story begins not with rockets or technology, but with fear. A fear so primal, so consuming, that it drove a young boy in South Africa to read science fiction novels by candlelight, dreaming of worlds beyond the violence and uncertainty of his childhood. Elon Musk didn't just want to escape Earth, he needed to. And that need, that desperate hunger for something greater, would eventually grow into an obsession that would captivate millions and terrify just as many. Picture this, a 10-year-old boy, small for his age, bullied mercilessly at school, finding solace in the pages of Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. In those pages, he discovered a concept that would haunt him for decades, the idea that civilizations rise and fall, that even the mightiest empires crumble to dust, and that only by spreading across multiple worlds can humanity hope to survive the inevitable catastrophes that await us. This wasn't just entertainment for young Elon, it was prophecy. But how does a bullied child from Pretoria become the man who literally moves mountains to build rockets? The transformation didn't happen overnight. It required failures so spectacular they would have destroyed lesser men, successes so improbable they seemed like magic, and a willingness to risk everything, not once, but again and again and again. When Musk sold PayPal for $1.5 billion, most people would have retired to a private island. Instead, he took every penny and poured it into two companies that experts said would fail, Tesla and SpaceX. His friends thought he'd lost his mind. His first wife watched him work 20-hour days, forgetting to eat, forgetting to sleep, consumed by visions of electric cars and rocket ships that seemed to belong more in comic books than in reality. But here's where the story takes its first dark turn. Because while the world saw a brilliant entrepreneur building the future, something else was happening behind closed doors. Musk wasn't just building companies, he was building power. The kind of power that lets you decide which technologies get developed, which problems get solved, and ultimately, who gets to inherit the stars. The creation of SpaceX in 2002 was sold to the world as a noble mission to make space travel affordable and accessible. But listen carefully to Musk's own words from those early days, and you'll hear something else entirely. I want to die on Mars, he said, just not on impact. It sounds like a joke, but for Musk it was a declaration of intent. He wasn't just planning to visit Mars, he was planning to own it. The engineering challenges were staggering. Imagine trying to land a 20-story building on a platform the size of a football field while it's falling from space at thousands of miles per hour. Now imagine doing it successfully not once, but dozens of times, while your competitors spend decades and billions of dollars just to put a single satellite in orbit. This wasn't just innovation, it was magic made manifest through sheer force of will and an almost supernatural ability to attract the brightest minds on the planet. But every time SpaceX achieved the impossible, every time a Falcon Heavy rocket landed with ballet-like precision or a Dragon capsule docked with the International Space Station, Musk's true goal moved closer to reality. And that goal was never really about exploration or scientific discovery. It was about control. The Starship project represents the culmination of 20 years of obsessive planning. Standing 400 feet tall and capable of carrying over 100 tons to Mars, it's not just a transportation system, it's a colonization machine. But colonization by whom and for what purpose? Musk speaks eloquently about making life multiplanetary, about ensuring human survival, about creating a backup for Earth's civilization. Noble words, inspiring words, but they mask a darker truth that becomes clear 
when you examine who gets to make the decisions about humanity's future in space. Mars is not a friendly place. It's a frozen desert, where the atmosphere is so thin you'd suffocate in seconds, where radiation levels would give you cancer within months, where a single equipment failure means death for everyone around you. The psychological challenges are even worse. Imagine being locked in a small room with the same people for years, knowing that Earth is millions of miles away, that no rescue is coming if things go wrong. The isolation would break most people long before the radiation killed them. Yet Musk speaks about Mars as if it's a vacation destination, as if the challenges are merely technical problems waiting to be solved. This isn't ignorance, it's deliberate misdirection. Because if people truly understood what life on Mars would be like, they might start asking uncomfortable questions about who would actually benefit from such a venture. The first Mars colonists won't be explorers or scientists. They'll be indentured servants, bound by contracts that make them utterly dependent on whoever controls the supply chain between Earth and Mars. They'll live or die based on the decisions made by a small group of incredibly powerful people, with Elon Musk at the center of it all. This isn't speculation, it's the only way the economics of Mars colonization can possibly work. Think about it. Every gram of food, every breath of air, every piece of equipment needed to survive on Mars will have to come from Earth, at least initially. The cost will be astronomical, the logistics nightmarish and the control absolute. Whoever pays for the trip calls the shots, and there's only one person with both the resources and the obsession to make it happen on the scale Musk envisions. But even this isn't the whole truth. The real secret behind Musk's Mars obsession isn't about control or economics or even survival. It's about something much more human, much more tragic and infinitely more dangerous. It's about a brilliant man who looked at the world around him, the climate change, the political instability, the growing inequality, and decided that the problem wasn't fixable. That Earth was doomed, and the only rational response was to abandon it. This is where Musk's vision becomes truly terrifying. Because if you believe that Earth is beyond saving, then every dollar spent on Mars colonization is a dollar not spent on solving the problems we face here and now. Every brilliant engineer working on Starship is an engineer not working on renewable energy or sustainable agriculture or any of the thousand other innovations we desperately need to heal our planet. Musk has created a beautiful, compelling narrative about human destiny and cosmic purpose but it's built on a foundation of despair. He's convinced millions of people that our future lies among the stars, while simultaneously profiting from the very industries that are destroying the world we already have. Tesla may make electric cars, but Musk's other ventures consume resources and energy at a staggering rate, all in service of an escape plan that only the ultra-wealthy will ever be able to afford. The critics see this clearly. They watch Musk accumulate power and influence while playing the role of humanity's savior. And they ask the questions that his admirers refuse to confront. What happens to the billions of people who can't afford a ticket to Mars? What happens to Earth when its brightest minds and greatest resources are focused on building a new world instead of saving the old one? What happens to democracy and human rights when civilization is controlled by whoever can afford to build the rockets? These aren't abstract philosophical questions. They're urgent practical concerns that demand answers. Because while we're all mesmerized by the spectacle of rockets landing and astronauts flying, a handful of individuals are quietly making decisions that will determine the course of human history for centuries to come. Yet there's another way to understand Musk's obsession, one that's more generous but no less troubling. Perhaps his drive to reach Mars isn't about control or profit or even escape. Perhaps it's about something deeper a recognition that humans are explorers by nature, that we've always pushed beyond the horizon in search of new worlds and new possibilities. Perhaps Mars represents not an abandonment of Earth, but an expansion of what it means to be human. This is the narrative that Musk himself prefers, and it's undeniably powerful. For millions of years, our ancestors left their comfortable caves to hunt in dangerous territories, crossed treacherous oceans to find new continents, and looked up at the night sky and wondered what lay beyond. The urge to explore, to grow, to become more than we are, this is perhaps the most fundamental human drive, more basic than hunger or even survival itself. From this perspective, 
Mars isn't an escape from Earth's problems, but a catalyst for solving them. The technologies needed to survive on Mars, closed loop life support systems, advanced manufacturing, sustainable energy production. These same innovations could revolutionize life on Earth. The organizational challenges of building a Mars colony could teach us how to coordinate global responses to climate change and poverty. The psychological insights gained from long duration space missions could help us understand how to build healthier, more resilient communities here at home. But even if we accept this more optimistic interpretation, troubling questions remain. Who gets to decide how these technologies are developed and deployed? Who benefits from the innovations and who bears the costs? And most importantly, what happens if the Mars project succeeds beyond our wildest dreams? If Musk actually manages to establish a thriving colony on another world? The answer is both thrilling and terrifying. Everything changes. Humanity becomes a multi-planetary species for the first time in our history, with all the possibilities and perils that entails. Mars colonies might serve as laboratories for new forms of government and society, free from the constraints and prejudices that have shaped Earth's civilizations. Or they might become the ultimate gated communities, where the wealthy retreat from the problems they helped create, while leaving the rest of us to deal with the consequences. The truth is, we don't know. We can't know, because what Musk is proposing isn't just a technological challenge or an economic venture, it's a fundamental transformation of what it means to be human. And like all transformations, it's impossible to predict where it will lead. What we do know is that the window for action is closing. Climate change, resource depletion, and political instability are accelerating. The technologies needed for Mars colonization are advancing rapidly. And the decisions being made in boardrooms and laboratories around the world today will determine whether humanity's future lies in the stars in the ashes of a dying planet or somewhere in between. This is why Musk's Mars vision matters so much and why it's so important to understand the truth behind it. Because whatever his motivations, whether he's a visionary savior or a dangerous megalomaniac or something more complex than either, he's shaping the future in ways that will affect every person alive today and every generation to come the red planet hangs in our night sky like a promise and a threat beautiful and terrible in its alien majesty. It represents everything we might become and everything we might lose. It embodies our greatest hopes for transcendence and our deepest fears of abandonment. It is, quite literally, the world that will determine whether humanity has a future worth living. And in the end, perhaps that's the most surprising truth of all about Elon Musk's Mars obsession. It's not really about Mars, it's about us, about who we choose to be, what we choose to value, and where we choose to place our faith. Mars is just the mirror in which we see our own reflection, distorted by distance and desire, but unmistakably human. The rockets will fly. The colonies will be built. The questions will be answered one way or another. But the ultimate destination of humanity's journey to Mars isn't a place at all. It's a choice. The choice of what kind of species we want to become as we take our first tentative steps into the vast, dark, beautiful cosmos that surrounds us. Tonight, somewhere in the desert of Texas, a massive silver rocket stands ready to carry that choice to the stars. And somewhere else, a restless man stares at the sky and dreams of red dust and endless horizons, driven by forces he may not fully understand, toward a destiny none of us can fully imagine. The future is coming whether we're ready or not. The only question is whether we'll shape it, or whether it will shape us.